Drama City Productions.com. You are plugged in for the Podcast Wrestling Society, where you can get dynamic weekly pro wrestling and MMA related content. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society so that you can stay in the know. Faith is the place and the sky is the limit. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. Woo! 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 Now, your host, he is the one and only Troy Adams. Welcome to Wrestling Wrestling coming coming you from from Wrestling Wrestling Society Country. Woo! I'm your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest Monster, and the man who's kissed all the girls and made them cry, Roy, woo, by God, Adams. And joining me today for all the limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing, he is the enforcer to my nature boy. He, to be the man, you gotta beat Greg. What's going on, Greg? What up? Well, at least that was better than last week when you were like, yeah. <laughs> I'm still pissed at you about that one. I was out of it. Yeah. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was all like... I don't know what's going on right now. I'm so high. I was all high. Why are you high? I haven't been high since Thursday. Oh, this is Thursday. Oh, I'm man. high because I'm a heel. What the hell? Uh... <laughs> Anyway, getting past all that stupidness, we got plenty of our own stupidness to get to today. Without, uh, without all that, man, there's uh, been a big week, uh, Tater. It's uh, there's a lot of news, bro. A lot of rumor and innuendo. But you know, you and I don't deal in rumor and innuendo unless we do. Roll Tide. No. Uh, but uh, we're also, this is a big deal, Greg, because do you realize what this episode is? Uh, the HCW episode? No. It is, number one, is our final episode in our long, painful haul through the year 1995 in pay-per-views. Oh. It has been a slog. Uh, and we will reveal to you at the end of the episode, so hold on tight. Uh, we will reveal what our next subject is going to be, and I am actually excited to watch the next stuff that we're going to review. <laughs> it's not often I I'm think. not, because it's good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, go back to watching your Russo, all right? This is no, going to be... done with that. Yeah, oh, good. Uh, good for you. But uh, this one will actually be good. Uh, we, like I said, hang on to the end of the episode. We will reveal it. But it is also special because it's, because it is episode 30. Yay! We've made it 30 episodes, <laughs> Greg. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, and just, just because you mentioned it, I, I, I gotta do it now. <laughs> Air horn. Brought it back, brother. Bro! Bro! Oh, I gotta get it in. Well, it is... Oh, man. Never mind. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> but it is episode 30. They said we couldn't do it, but by God, we proved them wrong. I guess. Sort of. Uh, shout out. Thank you to all of our new listeners and all of uh, our growing community on the tube of you. To all of you that have not subscribed yet, go to YouTube and search for us, Podcast Wrestling Society. We don't have our own custom URL yet, but we're almost there. Just uh, got to keep growing. But, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, time real quick before we get into all of the news. We got to gotta do our normal shilling uh, at, the, at the beginning of the, uh, the episode, telling you about uh, all the great websites you can uh, visit. And all the great swag for the podcast you can purchase. So getting into it here, if you go to dramacityproductions.com forward slash pod rest society, that is our own page at dramacityproductions.com. 
And not only can you see every single archived episode of the podcast right there, but right up at the top of the page, you can see links to our Spreadshirt and Redbubble stores. If you click on them, it will take you right where you need to go. There's tons of great swag on there. Lots of uh, good designs and artwork that you can put on hats, shirts, hoodies, uh, mouse pads, phone cases, bags, buttons, stickers. It, the list goes on and on and on of, of uh, different merchandise that we offer. It's all great. It's all cool. We got uh, various logos. We've got sayings that we have here on the show and stuff like that. Definitely go check it out. That's dramacityproductions.com forward slash pod rest society, just like our social media handles. And you also need to head over to wrestlingwithwrestling.com. There they've got this podcast featured, of course, and then there are other great podcasts out there like the Andre Corbeil Show and the various podcasts by Mr. Jacob Grandi, a friend of the show, like 205 Jive. And there are many other review shows there, review articles of wrestling federations, not just here in the United States, but abroad, whether it's Mexico, Japan, Canada, England, wherever. You can get the show reviews if you can't see it, like on TV or on the computer or whatnot. You can keep up with whatever promotion you want. There's indie news. There's news from the big leagues, big leagues. There are some interviews with some wrestlers and wrestling personalities and videos from the indies from here in America and abroad. Definitely go check it out. Tons of great stuff there at wrestlingwithwrestling.com, covering all four corners of the ring. I also want to make it clear that this is not a spot. These guys do not sponsor us. However, every single show, i got to let you know that uh, got to open up a fresh monster to keep me going through the long haul of 1995 and beyond. Going to be covering some big news today. Uh, Monster does not sponsor the podcast. However, I do, me personally, Troy Adams here on the podcast, Wrestling Society, do fully endorse Monster Energy, baby. And uh, and now that we are done with all that, I think it's about time we get down to business there, Greg. You want to... uh, Hop into all the news that is the news from the wrestling world. Yeah, let's get all in. Oh, F yeah. Here we go. That was not a sexual pun. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, I made it one. So there you go. <laughs> I'm sure all of our listeners would appreciate it. Uh, before we get into the news real quick, I do have to ask you. I don't know if you've ever seen on social media. I, I love Sasha Banks. Just putting that out there. But... My God, her fans are the saltiest, crappiest fans of anybody I have ever seen on the internet. Why so? I just, they're always whining, they're always complaining, and they're always crapping on every other woman on the roster. Well, this one's nowhere near Sasha's level. Sasha's so great. Sasha's amazing. These ones all suck. When did she become the end-all, be-all? I don't know. And I get it that they're mad that she's been really really I'm also over. a huge fan of her by the way just kind of yeah say it first um she but, well, yeah. she gets huge reactions i'll say that it, it's it's undeniable however like they're and and i get that they're mad she hasn't been like mega pushed and whatever like other ones however like she's a four-time champion and good lord man like just let it go like you don't have to like this other one was talking about how uh Asuka and all those other quote-unquote useless Joshi wrestlers aren't going to get over as much as Sasha, and they're wasting time. I'm like, it's kind of a little racist, (laughs) but whatever. Uh, Well, you know, the ones that hate her chant, Sasha's ratchet, so. Oh, God. (sighs) That's that's also not racist whatsoever. (laughs) Yeah, right. (sighs) Good Lord. Well in the actual news here uh i will say i didn't see any ufc news is there any no there's a fight a couple days ago tomorrow uh, whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah depending on the timeline here yeah that one i just i don't know it didn't is it a big one giggity uh it's uh, robert whitaker and kelvin gaslam finally for the middleweight title and anderson silver returns huh Okay, then. Well, whatever. 
Um, well, getting into the actual news here, the big stories out of... Uh, there, there are some bigger stories out of WWE that we will get to, so don't think I'm going to ignore them. But I'm just going to start with this one because it's been highly publicized and everything. All the AEW news right out the gate. Uh, Kenny Omega finally broke his silence. He is signing with All Elite Wrestling. Finally broke his silence after five days. Well, he has... <laughs> well, Sorry, you were a little liberal with that, but... Well, it's been a silence on who he's going to sign with for, like, a while now. Because when he announced he was not re-signing with New Japan... Well, he's not going to announce it when he's still in a contract. Yeah, that's true. Well, but I'm just saying, he's he's finally made it clear who he's signing with. It is All Elite Wrestling, and apparently he's an executive vice president. Well, yeah, but so is everybody else on the planet. I think I, I may even have an executive vice president role there, too. Well, you've you've got stock options, I'll say that. And you're not even an employee, so. Uh, but yeah, so that's the big one. Uh, the other ones, they announced um, at the uh, uh, presser, or like, I, I guess, the, the ticket announcements for Double or Nothing, they made other announcements of official signees. Uh, the Lucha Bros, by the way, have been announced uh, that they've signed officially, which... Makes me wonder what their role will be moving forward in because they're still in impact. Is like I'm wondering, it's like, are they going to be able to go back and forth or are they going to have an exclusive deal? I don't know, but either way, uh, a number of new talent were introduced, including Sonny Kiss, never freaking heard of him, uh, Sammy Guevara, maybe I've heard of him, I don't know. Uh, the best friends, which are Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta, they have announced they are officially signing. Kylie Ray and Nyla Rose. Again, never heard of them. Which I'm not complaining. They're signing people that we don't know who they are, and they're not just, oh, well, these guys have a name from WWE. We'll sign them. So, Well, that's going to be their whole future. Which I sure as hell hope that's not their whole future is, oh, we're just going to sign WWE guys. Oh, Bull Dempsey's coming. You know he is. Why is that the one? Speaking I just of... try to find the most lame, obscure one they can possibly find. Uh, and they will do it, I bet. I and don't... he's going to be an executive vice president, too. Watch. I don't think they're going to they're gonna like go out of their way to sign a bunch of obscure WWE guys. It's not TNA. and They will. It's going to happen. Why? They will. Why? Because you just know that you're, you're, they're going to. They want to get guys who, like, like fans of WWE know. That's what TNA does. They're going to do the same thing. Yeah, but TNA got guys that were actually something in WWE. You're talking about, like, people like Bull Dempsey and crap. Like, that's never going to move a needle. No, like, well, AEW is not going to move a needle either, but... Again, I just why? You're just throwing, I just don't you're just throwing stuff out. I just don't see it happening, dude. It reminds me of WCW. I mean, WCW moved everyone, a needle for Everyone's a while. getting, yeah. And then what happened? It collapsed because they were owned by Time Warner, who didn't want wrestling. Yeah, and the cons own the Jaguars, who don't play football. <laughs> Good lord! <laughs> Come on, man. But just every, I, I don't, I, I don't think it's going to succeed. I just, I don't see well, it. I'm not going to be sold on it. Well, I'm not I mean, looking for any excuse to crap on them and say that they're going to fail. I'm trying to stay positive. And, and and it's not just I mean, because it's AEW. I would do that with any new company. I'm trying to stay positive. I mean, no one did it with House of Hardcore when they were supposed to be the next CCW. No one talked about that. That was supposed to be a big thing. Okay, well, I mean, being the new ECW isn't exactly a big thing, but... I'm just saying, though, that was supposed to be the next thing. And they couldn't get a TV deal. Now they're on Twitch. Well, we'll yeah. see TV deals and whatnot for this. I'm going to hold judgment on anything i'm not saying they're going to succeed or fail i'm just saying i'm going to wait and see i'm i've never once said they're going to succeed i or mean fail. i don't need i don't really want to wait and see because i honestly just don't care i mean it's not my thing well i just i just I mean, want I'll, more I'll, wrestling i'll check it out i just well, want yeah but wrestling. when wwe throws more wrestling at it, you say it's too much content because it's the same company over and over and over and over yeah but it's still i want something different I mean, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't see it. Well, I mean, I look at 
I look at everyone getting creative control. I'm like, oh man, that's gonna blow up in their face. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think everybody's getting creative control. The only ones they said are were obviously the the elite because you know they're yeah. And control. who got creative control in WCW? All the NWO guys. And yeah. what happened? So there you go. I mean, that's enough right there. Well, they also didn't run. It's, it's the the difference is the elite made it clear. It's like this is our company. We run the thing. So. <laughs> That's on them. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. at what point is the, is what point our heads going to collide? I don't it's know. About to happen. We'll see. It's about to happen. I'm I'm trying to stay positive because again, it's never a negative thing to have more wrestling out there and to have more options and more. No, it's not negative. I just I just it's just it's not me. I mean, it's not going to be something I follow. Well, like I said, right. I'll check it out once in a while, but. Yeah, well, I mean, it was the same way back in the 90s. There were people who couldn't give a crap less what was on WCW television. My dad was one of them, no matter how great it was. And same thing with WWF. No matter how great it was, there were WCW fans. Well, WCW was great for two years, though. It's, you know. Well, they, yes, but they still had a loyal father. It was smaller, but they still had the loyal Southern fans and whatever that followed them, you know, in the early days. But. And they never, ever, like, once WCW went out of business, they just stopped watching wrestling. So I, I, there were there were quite a few. about like a that. couple people, but, I mean, I mean, WWE just made a billion dollars this year. So I, la- I just laugh when people say, oh, it's the same old crab and the ratings are in the toilet. I don't think they care about the ratings when they just made a billion dollars. Well, absolutely like, not. Damn. I mean, they have, they have. We'll, so, I mean, that's that's my thing. We'll, so it's like, we'll get to I mean, all when that. we talk about the ratings now. We'll, we'll get. No, I'm just saying, it's like, none of that matters. I mean, they're just. To a it's certain be extent, a no. Spec in the sports entertainment realm. That's all they're going to be is the other guys. Well, yeah, and that's I mean, they're they're flat out admitting they're not. That that's what they're going to be. No, not... no, no. Cody had an interview and he basically, without admitting it, said he wished he wants to be the WCW wants to crush WWE for ending WCW. He basically said that. So, I mean, well, he's got some high hopes, and it's well, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Good for him, but yeah, I, I mean. I don't know. I saw an interview with Booker T, and he's a Jericho. That's good. But when I look at guys like Daniels and Gazarian, people are going to look at them and go, oh, those are the TNA guys. That's what they got. I mean, it's a good point. That's what Booker said, and he's right. You know, it's like, that's what they are. Yeah, but so, they've been out of TNA for years now. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's what people know them from because Ring of Honor is not on public TV, or it's like not on big TV. So people know them from TNA. That's what they know them from. Well, yeah. I mean, people know Jericho from WWE, too. But again, he's been out of WWE for years doing his own thing. So he but it also I don't like w, while he became a huge superstar in WWE. I mean, he's just a legend now and he's been all over. So, I mean, with Jericho and it and he's like the one WWE guy. I mean, I guess you could say Cody, but you know, that they have. So that's why I'm sticking positive. About now, that. now, now, right now. Well, yeah, um, but I mean, they're, they've, they haven't really given any indication that, yeah, we're going to go out and sign all these WWE guys. Well, no, they can't because they're in a contract. That'd be tampering. It's illegal. Well, of they're not. I'm not saying by name. I'm just saying in general. So I'm hoping no, I'll tell you, they sign Randy Orton. That's the biggest laugh I ever have. I'm telling you right now. Well, I will I, laugh so damn hard. Sorry. I <laughs> Again, we'll, oh, we'll man. again we'll 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 get to that in a minute. Well, no, I mean that goes in with this though. Yeah, I know. We'll we'll let's. There's something coming up about that, but I I just want to wrap this up here real. Just to finish up, uh, real quick. I know I said I haven't heard any of these. I guess um, Nyla Rose, I guess is a transgender uh man that transitioned to a woman. So there's that. Uh, moving on, not c- talking about that anymore, because I don't want to start any arguments, uh, among our listeners. Also appearing at Double or Nothing will be Aja Kong and Yuka Sakazaki. Never heard of Yuka, uh, but we actually talked about Aja Kong last week on the podcast. She was in a Survivor Series match in 1995. Mm. So think about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! If that's a okay. one, if it's a one-off, whatever. She looks almost. If if that picture I saw is current, she looks almost exactly the same. Ugh, well, but... she wears a lot of makeup, right? Uh, yeah, quite a bit. Well, maybe she doesn't, but you know, <laughs> I don't know. All right, this next story. 
first, before I get into the story, I just want to say, you know, every time I bring up AEW, I know you're not going to watch, but every time I bring up AEW and what I didn't doing, say that. I didn't say I was following it hardcore. I mean, well, I'll watch right. some of it. But it's like, I, I can't bring even bring it up around you and Ramon without hearing, oh, it's going to fail. It's going out of business. Why even try? It's going to suck. Every time. I'm not. Yeah. Why? Just let it be. I, I just, why? May I ask why you take such great offense to it? Because it's like, why crap on it when it's not a thing? You like you even said it's not even a thing yet. Yeah, I, but that's my thing. It's like everyone's saying it's going to be huge and it's nothing yet. I mean, everyone's like, WWE's going out, it's over, they're going to be competition. I'm well, like, to those... And so I'm just firing back, so I can't fire back? I'm, well, it's like you're firing back at me. Like, I'm not saying well, that. I mean, I'm not one of those idiots. I just, if one of those idiots I'm... out there is saying that, then yes, they are idiots. I'm going to say that right, like, I'll join your side on this one. To all of those out there that are just, like, so hardcore, oh, it's going to do this and it's going to do that, we don't know. We don't freaking know anything that they're going to do. Nothing. They don't have a TV deal. Yeah, but they don't have experience. So every uh, we've seen so many places start. Why is this the one that everyone thinks is going to be like moderately successful? That's what I want to know. Uh, I will say because I it's mean, very di- it's like so far its beginnings are very different than any other company I've ever seen. Um, I mean the the wrestlers yeah, they launch in a pool. Well, the wrestlers are running the thing so i i don't know this could be very bad very good or could just turn out to be absolutely I nothing just, you know i mean i'm just saying it's just seen it we've seen it all before I well mean, you brought this up this next story uh the rumor mill that makes me laugh uh within the past two weeks well actually the the, the past week especially i've heard uh that they've offered a rider truck full of money to Randy Orton to come over, and Randy Orton is quote unquote considering it. I have heard because AJ Styles has not re signed with the WWE yet and is still in contract negotiations, that means he's going, and then the club could follow. Uh, that all makes me laugh. The biggest, you want to hear the biggest one that, that just like had, I, I almost had to like be revived with those, those electric paddles for this one. What? The Undertaker. Has taken all men- oh, yeah. has he's taken all mentions of WWE off of his social media apparently, so that means that the Undertaker could be going to AEW, <laughs> or at the very yep. least is taking indie bookings. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. With stuff and like you that- wonder why I laugh, <laughs> and you wonder why I laugh. No, I'm totally I'm on your sorry. side with this one. Like with this one, <laughs> I'm totally all of it. Yeah. I mean- <laughs> With these it's people, all one package. <laughs> yeah, these people, like, calm the F down. They're looking for anything and everything. Uh, although somebody did report, I believe it was Ryan Satin again, although I could be wrong. They reported, oh, AJ Styles has agreed to a new contract with WWE, and he replied and said, I did? When was this? Oh, yeah, but Daniel Bryan signed quietly, too. And he also said he hadn't signed yet, and he did. So well, I'm not reading into it at all, unlike the marks. However, because uh, my thing is, I guarantee he's just trying to get the best deal he can, but he's not considering leaving. Like, same thing with Randy Orton. I If he acts like, because he's never said anything about leaving. All the marks, you know, are filling, fueling the uh, rumor mill. My thing is, and, and somebody else brought this up to me, one of my friends brought this up, they're like, He's like at the very like at most he's going to use this as a bargaining tool. Like, well, they offered me this much money, and Vince is like, well, I'll offer you double. Damn it! So I could, yeah, I could, I, I mean, I could very likely see Vince McMahon also I, backing a rider truck full of money up to Randy Orton's mansion. I, I don't, I don't for one reason because we don't even know what this company's going to do yet. So yeah, the WWE what if is Randy signing. Was jumping on the Titanic, you know. Yeah, but think about that. But Vince is also throwing a lot of money at a lot of guys for like big paydays. Whether it has anything to do with AEW, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he's throwing a lot of money. Well, I mean, it could be coincidental that he has to because the contracts are coming up too. Well, and maybe they just picked the right, maybe they just picked the right year to launch. Yep, perhaps. Um, Also announced all elite wrestling will be partnering with Lucha Libre AAA. 
which is yeah we all seen how their big show went down huh god i'm not gonna judge them <laughs> off of that one show because that was oh, like oh that's that was it i will never watch a show from them after that that was it for me well that's too much that's way too much i've never watched before and <laughs> i won't watch now but i'm yeah. just saying like i have seen like apparently i don't know what the hell happened there because this is like triple mania oh, like clearly, cl- clearly they didn't have a director and yeah and they just let vampiro just here have fun on the mic <laughs> yeah basically because this was uh this was um like tw- 26 i think so they've had 25 events go off in the past without a hitch other than uh at 25 there was that controversy with sexy star and rosemary um i hope sure yeah, that wasn't really their fault that was the... yeah no i'm not blaming them. yeah uh so i don't know what the hell happened this year but either way uh all in all they got some good talent so that's a good sign and they've also partnered with Oriental Wrestling Entertainment. Who? Yeah, I said the same damn thing. I think that was the exact message I sent to you. Um, <laughs> although I, I, I saw a hype video. I mean, anybody could make a hype video look good. But it looks like they've got some decent talent. But we will see. <sighs> I don't know. That that was like, okay. Either way. Uh, the AEW card is starting to flush out for double or nothing. While the card is subject to change, obviously, the uh, unofficially booked matches right now, Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho, uh, the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Bros, Bros, Hangman Page versus Pac. Uh, SC- That's actually confirmed. Yes, that one is. Uh, SCU versus SEMA, and two OWE wrestlers to be named later. And Nyla Rose versus Kylie Ray. Who Ray? Whatever. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm excited for the Omega Jericho and that Bucks versus Lucha Bros match will be insane. I'm actually. Oh man, think of the think of the high kicks and the flips and stuff. Oh man. Well, yeah, there's gonna be That's like five thousand be... super kicks between both teams. So you know, but it, and a couple of package pile drivers. Oh, of course. Uh, well, a package, uh, a super kick into a package pile driver as well. But either way, it'll be fun. I think they did that last night or mm. last week. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, way. and uh, by the way, Conrad was like very adamant about it. Guys, that was not supposed to happen. We don't know what happened here. They just, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, good grief. That's all it's like. Loading up the cannon for me. That's like that. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Uh, uh, or the, the sumo truck. Oh, Halloween Havoc. Uh, at Halloween Havoc 95. I, I I try to block it out of my mind, but uh, Fail. when they had that truck expert on commentary, and after the whole thing happened where the giant fell off the building, you know, and the truck expert just looks, he's like, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. And I'm like, you just watched a man possibly die, and your response is, well, that's not supposed to happen. Like, shut up. <laughs> like, go away. <laughs> Also, uh, Tony Schiavone said that a hundred times during the Russo era. Yeah. He goes, folks, we have a script. That's not in there. Why? Why say that? We have a script. Shut up. Just shut up. Uh, yeah, Scott Hall had a script, too. Oh, sorry. Anyway, um, I'm going to hell for that one. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, Katsu- uh, Katsuya Kitamaru is officially leaving New Japan. Yeah, a collective who? Uh... The day before G1 Supercard at MSG, Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling will be holding a fan event in New York City called the G1 Supercard Festival of Honor. Yeah, that's a mouthful. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's their version of Access, I guess. Yeah. Meet all the people you don't know. Uh, next, sorry to crap on them, but I just had to throw that in there. Impact Wrestling has announced the date and location of their next pay-per-view. Rebellion will take place at the Rebel Entertainment Complex in Toronto, Ontario, Canada on Sunday, April 29th. It's not that United something we stand or in Jersey, WrestleMania weekend? Uh, I don't think that's a a pay-per-view. I think that's just a special show. So they're bringing back Rob Van Dam for that. Mm, Yep, I guess. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Yep. But yeah, so obviously Rebellion is no longer trademarked by WWE, and Impact snatched it right the hell up. So good for them. Uh, but yeah, it'll be Impact's second pay-per-view of 2019. 
Man, I bet you like a whole 15 or 16 people will see this one. Oh, you watch it, man. It'll be like 50. <laughs> and I, I might be highballing it there, but, you know, whatever. All right. Uh, out of Impact Wrestling, mercifully. Here we go. Aww. Get ready for this one. Two lawsuits have been filed regarding Lucha Underground's contracts. Pro Wrestling Sheet reported that El Hijo del Fantasma, or excuse me, El Hijo del Fantasma, I can never pronounce Get it that right. Get it right? Yeah. Uh, who goes by the name... Me, but sorry. Yeah, right. Uh, who goes by the name King Cuerno on Lucha Underground filed a lawsuit in California against the El Rey Network and Baba G Productions, the production company behind Lucha Underground. In the lawsuit, Fantasma is claiming that both El Rey and Baba G have illegally restricted him and other wrestlers from, quote, engaging in their lawful profession. Documents obtained by Pro Wrestling Sheet said that those under Lucha Underground contracts are making less than $4,000 a year compared to other wrestling promotions who offer a living wage. Not to get political about it, but that's how it is in Mexico. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Yeah. Well, also, who would sign that? I don't know. Someone had too much tequila one night in the bar. They signed, I want to wrestle. They signed quite a few, like, well-known talents. Like, El El Hijo del Fantasma is a big-ish name down in Mexico, and he signed that thing. Either way, to continue, Fantasma claims that uh, to have lost thousands of dollars as a result of the contract and is seeking both punitive and actual damages. Lucha Central later reported that Cobra Moon, Joey Ryan, Fantasma, and Ivalice are the names attached to this specific lawsuit. Ivalice wrote a since-deleted statement on social media saying that she was being legally held hostage by the company after they wouldn't release her from her contract following the end of the fourth season. For the record, Lucha Underground has not aired a new episode since November, the fate of the promotion, and if it will continue for a fifth season is currently unknown, just like it is every freaking season. It's always on the bubble. Hmm. That should tell you something. Oh, and Jim Cornette rails against this promotion, so, you know, we would love it. I'm just kidding. But anyway. Um, well, I love his rants. Yeah. Well, I know, I know, you, I, I know you love one in particular uh, guy from there, and that is uh, Matanza. Also known as Jeff Cobb, but yeah, yeah. before personal he, friend. <laughs> well, yeah, before anybody knew who he was, really, I mean, they kind of knew about Jeff Cobb, but his first real big thing in wrestling, which is funny, was as Matanza Cuerno, or not Cuerno, uh, Matanza. This is not a whenever. alcohol. Cuer, Cuervo. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of King. Whatever. Uh, I'm thinking of another wrestler, Cuerno. Uh, King Cuerno is on there, but I can't remember his damn name. Matanza something. Either way, he's the monster, which is funny because he's legit five foot nine. But God it's dang. Yeah, but God dang, is he a spark plug, dude? About as wide as he is tall and strong as hell. So he made a good monster and he played the role really well. Uh, his finishing move that uh, oh, tour of the islands as uh, Matanza, yep. he called it. Um, Gift of the Gods, I believe, or some something to that effect. But anyway, so that's the big controversy with Lucha Underground. Um, my God, I, I don't even know what to say. Everybody's suing Lucha Underground at all times. I just find that hilarious. They're probably spending more on lawyer bills than they do on their talent. Yeah, probably. <laughs> when they've got people like Marty the Moth and Sexy Star. Like, yeah. Uh, now to WWE News to close things out. Real quick, uh, finally, they announced the original Hart Foundation is being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Isn't that just rumored? As far as I know, but I guess it's confirmed rumor. I don't know. It might be. Well, hell, as of the posting of this, it might be confirmed. So watch Raw and SmackDown, everybody. They still haven't put the Hall of Fame tickets on sale yet. Yeah. It's really freaking weird this year. Also, uh, the big rumors Undertaker is going to be the headliner. But, again, nothing is confirmed. I mean, if they're going to put Undertaker in, New York is a good place to do it, I'd say. Considering, you know, he's been the conscience of WWE for, like, decades. 
Uh, also, WWE has officially confirmed that their next superstar shakeup is set for April. WWE uploaded a video announcing that the 2019 superstar shakeup will take place on Monday, April 15th, and Tuesday, April 16th. Wow. So tax we... day. <laughs> oh man, three things are confirmed. IRS appearance uh, oh, confirmed. Yes, that'd be awesome. He joins the Wyatt family. <laughs> Bray Wyatt, you didn't pay your taxes. That'd be great. Oh, I love it. Uh, could, can you imagine the the promos for this? Vince McMahon, he's like, three things are confirmed, pal. Death, taxes, and a superstar shakeup. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> After their 10-year ten ten deal began with two controversy-filled shows, WWE is set to make their return to Saudi Arabia this May. Yay. By the way, and I'm not saying this like, oh man, all these people. And I don't don't take it that way. However, there was a chunk of people that after this news dropped, they canceled their network subscription. They'll be back, but it happened. So just putting that out there. Of course they did. Yeah. yeah. And and you know, I totally believe they did too. Well, I mean, these were filed numbers from like you know because they released their subscription numbers. So, but oh well, they're, they're, they're not that's why, though, because they said. Well, wait, what? I mean, uh, the ne- the people who canceled. I mean, they said they canceled for that reason. Yeah. Well, I like I just said they'll be back, but you know they canceled for now. I know three people who are already back. So yeah. Yeah. There you go. It won't last. Finally, to wrap this up, WWE... I really... can tell you who it was, but I don't want to start political crap on her either, but... <laughs> Grief. Uh, to re- yeah, Joke! We've, we've already railed against Saudi Arabia in the past and all this crap. I'm not... I just... I don't have the energy to do it today. I just... I what really do I don't. care? Because it's their business. Yeah, whatever the hell. I just... Like, the last show sucked, so this show is also going to suck. Oh, yeah. Because the first one was so great, too. Yeah, the first one was watchable yeah the first one was watchable but yeah it was pretty bad it was like 1995 level crap um last one completely sucked this next one is not going to be good so don't go out of your way i'll just say that to wrap things up because you've been uh pumping up wwe so much i will continue here wwe released their highly anticipated i I love the use of that uh fourth quarter and year-end earnings numbers But while their numbers are impressive, the stock market has yet to respond with a big surge in price. They will next month, or a month after with WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, that's usually when it bumps up. Uh, Revenue increases were attributed to an increase in TV rights fees and their yearly deal with the Saudi Arabian government. In addition to the Australian Stadium Show, uh, which was in quarter four. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. That shows how forgettable that damn thing was. Numbers that were down slightly overall were live event revenue, live show attendance, and television viewership. However, WWE stock is up 1.71%, and or, which equals out to $81.12. So the moral of the story, ladies and gents, is WWE doesn't give a damn how many people are buying tickets or watching their shows. It has nothing to do with how much money they're making. Which I've been saying forever. Yeah. They will continue to make money whether there are five penguins having sex in the crowd or a sold out. Oh, hell yeah. What the hell? So just keep that in mind. They don't care. Never will. I'm not saying that they're putting on a crap product. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying they don't care about you and your opinions. They never will. They will always make money. So there is that. But anyway, I am done with the news. Anything I missed? Pretty big news. Uh, no, but, you know, are we going to talk about Naked Mini? No, or really? we're not. All right. We're going to take, yeah, take a break. Let you know about shut some, it down. Let you know about some other great podcasts here on the Drama City Productions Podcast Network. When we return in your house five. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Dig it. Drama City Productions presets. Hey, it's Ben here, host of the Regular Stories Podcast, a podcast where I interview interesting people about their lives. These are not celebrities. They're not the elite. These are regular people, and these are their stories. 
you can follow us on Facebook at Regular Stories and on Instagram at Regular Stories. We are everywhere that you can get a podcast. We are on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, just about everywhere else. Look up Regular Stories Podcast. Drama City Productions.com. Paycheck. Red. Let's talk about Paycheck and Red. Because these boys don't just talk the talk, they are best friends. They see eye to eye, they communicate, they understand each other, and they understand the world we live in. They're weird enough to superimpose pictures of their faces onto pictures of other people. Let that sink in. Johnny Paycheck. Wayne Red Mincy. All right, Greg, we are wrapping up our journey through the year 1995. Gay us. Mm-hmm. You ready for this one? Mm-hmm. Nope. Well, tough crap. We are coming to you live. Well, not live, but we are coming to you. Uh, what is this? 20. I, I can't do math in my head. 26 years later. Something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm five, way off. Uh, 24, 24, 24. Close enough. Whatever. Sure. 24 years. 1995. Whatever. There yeah. it is. Two decades later. <laughs> um, this can in WWF in your house five took place December seventeenth nineteen ninety five from my second favorite state in the union and I say that dripping with sarcasm Hershey Park Arena in Hershey Pennsylvania who who it was our last pay per view of the year before Royal Rumble nineteen ninety six the attendance was seventy two thousand or seventy two hundred excuse me seventy two hundred eighty nine. 72,000 people on this earth didn't want to see this crap, but that's beside the point. The opening package really puts over the feuding family storyline for Brett and Bulldog. The this the whole thing of this is it was December and it was like the tagline was like seasons beatings and whatever. So that's what it was. I think it was called in your house seasons beatings, I believe. Yeah, I mean, they didn't like outright call it that like on the event. They didn't beat that home, but they did their opening packages with the voiceover from Todd Pittengill were so cheesy, and he was like, it will truly be a season's beatings. I'm like, what does that even mean? But either way. It means thanks for your 20 bucks. Enjoy this crap. Thanks for your 20 bucks. Now screw you. Get ready for a colonoscopy. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, the in-your-house graphic is like in a house, and it like opens a door, goes out, and starts so getting pelted with snowballs, so it runs back in the house and slams the door shut. I always like those um, graphics. Some of them, well, most of them. Yeah, some of them were clever. Uh, I hated the theme song though. That stupid, like, I don't even know what that was like, jazzy. Whatever. We're in your house. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. That sucked. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Santa Claus is in the like, crowd. Great, man. Shut up. Well, you want to talk about great. Santa Claus was in the crowd handing out gifts with the smoking guns. Oh, well, hell yeah. Because if I want a gift from somebody, it's the smoking guns. But uh, here, little hey. boy. <laughs> hey, man, that's that's Mr. Ass and the winner of uh, Brawl for All. You shut your mouth. I can see it now. They're like, come here, little one. What are you, five? I, you're old enough to have a revolver. Come here. And, <laughs> and you, oh, little girl, here, take take this to your daddy. It's a, it, 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 it's a bottle of Southern Comfort. I'm I'm getting like hardcore like I, that's not a racism. What is it? Uh, 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 bigotish. Stereotype. I don't know. It's not even a word. <laughs> stereotype. Yeah, stereotypical. There you go. Either way, the opening match. Oh man, it was a barn burner. I was running down this card by the way to Kyle, and he just sat there as like, wow. <laughs> like I did not put this over to make him want to watch it. I'll say that. And all I did was run down the card. I didn't even like tell him what the matches were like. Uh, opening match, one, two, three, Kid and Psycho Sid have Ted DiBiase in their corner. They're taking on... Yes, that's a real team. Oh, yeah. They're taking on the team of Razor Ramon and Marty Jannetty, who is on... Hell yes. This was right before his, what, ninth firing of the year, I think? Something like that. <sighs> uh, actually, if I remember right, this may be his last firing. 
Well, doesn't he come back one more time with Leaf Cassidy, or was that before this? Uh, that was before this. Oh man. Yeah, I uh, think Al Snow uh, is already Al Snow in uh, EC Dub in ECW at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Wait, well, wait. No, no. Never mind. You're right. He goes back once more. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's ninety six but... Survivor Series. Yeah. That's his last firing. <laughs> God, how many lives does this fool have? Uh, a ton. Like, dude, he had to have he had to have had pictures of Vince with a donkey. Like, that's all. <laughs> had to have. In '96, Vince finally got the pictures and fired his ass for real. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Get the f out." Uh, for some uh, reason, Razor Ramon and Marty Jannetty were both wearing. Why is it a donkey? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Worst I could think of. Uh, for some oh, reason, man. For some reason, Razor Ramon and Marty Jannetty were both wearing matching black leather jackets. I don't freaking know why, because neither one of them ever wore black leather jackets until tonight. Well, well, they didn't even come out to the Rockers theme either. That really made me mad. Well, they should have. They should have, like, <laughs> I could just see them now, like, jacket shopping together, and they're like, does this make us best friends? Yup. <laughs> no, that's what Marty says. I guarantee you're isn't to say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gold Dust is in the crowd. Actually, real quick, I don't know if you remember, but Scott Hall wore leather jackets all the time, just not to the ring. Well, yeah, that wasn't his, his He was ring wearing ring. one when we met him in uh, New Orleans. Was he? I yeah. Mean, yeah, I guess, yeah. Well, he wore it definitely as part of the NWO. I, re- I remember that. He wore a lot of vests as Razor, though. Either yeah. way, uh, Gold Dust is in the crowd rubbing and licking himself when he sees Razor. You know where this is leading. Oh, uh, who wouldn't? Yeah. Well, you know where this is leading, Oh, look Greg. at that hairy Cuban man. Well, clearly, this is this is leading to Gold Dust feuding with Roddy Piper. That's where this is going, Greg. <laughs> Uh, he's in a VIP That's a area. story of its own. Yeah. He's in a VIP area, by the way, with an old school theater usher next to him. It was weird. There's one point where the kid and Sid beat the tar out of Razor in their corner for like five freaking minutes. The referee does nothing, and Razor is no selling for like ever. I'm like, what is going on? Like, they're just beating the crap out of him, and Razor just keeps standing up like, what do you got? What do you got? And the referee's not breaking it up. <sighs> it was weird. Anyway, uh, Todd Bitten- Pettengill interviews Goldust in the middle of the match because nobody wants to see this crap. Goldust is fanning himself with a WWF magazine that he's on the cover of, and he's, like, salivating over Razor. Uh, Raz- Again, who wouldn't? <laughs> Razor hits a second-rope bulldog on Sid for the win. And then tries to hit Razor's Edge on the kid, but Sid rolls out and he pulls kid down and gets him out of the ring. Notes, I said, halfway decent opener, nothing special, two Uncle Daves. So average. I'm I'm like I'm hoping at some point you're gonna give one of these matches five Uncle Daves because you have yet to do that in all of ninety five. I know it's coming though. Uh well actually you know what Uncle Dave actually gave the SummerSlam uh ladder match? A yeah. four? He gave it four and a half stars, so that's pretty. Yeah. It would have been like eight stars in the Tokyo Dome, but that's still pretty impressive. Oh hell yeah! And and in that Observer, he said that Shawn Michaels is the greatest worker to ever live. So well, even the blind squirrel, right? <laughs> uh, Jerry the King Lawler interrupts the next match's introductions for Buddy Landell, so it kind of ruins the big surprise coming up. Well, I, I say big surprise. I, Buddy was rather large at this point, but that's beside the point. Uh, (laughs) Lawler runs down the crowd, saying that Santa is not coming for them. Oh, boo. He lets everyone know that Jeff Jarrett is back! Woo! Thank God! Oh, well, he spent too many days working hard on the road while the hands on the clock were spinning too slow. He couldn't wait to get back to his baby tonight. (laughs) Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good God. It was right there. But Jarrett walks out wearing a shiny silver and gold suit. So gaudy. Uh, he spells his name and laughs a lot. Lawler says that he's got a big surprise for Jarrett, and it's a gold CD. Uh, I forgot CDs were a thing in 95, but whatever. Uh, Jarrett says that the finishing touches are being put on his new album, and his new tour will be called the Greater Than Great Tour. He also declares himself for the 1996 Royal Rumble. Yay. Well, if you think that wasn't good enough, next we got Dean Douglas coming out. 
and he's got a paddle with him. Like old school, like back in schools where they used to punish you with a paddle. He's got one. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? Yeah, of course. He needs a gimmick, pal. Uh, but he says that the doctors have sidelined him for having a back injury. He claims that he has a new student, however, and since the announcers... <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> yeah. And the announcers have already said Landell's name, so it ruins the surprise. Not that it was, you know, a big one, but Nature Boy oh Buddy Landell then comes out to a really bad ripoff of Ric Flair's theme played on trumpets. Actually, it sounds like uh, the old school Nintendo games where they used to, like, you know, like Super Nintendo games where you used to do, like, the 5-bit or or if I, uh, 8-bit, like, themes. That's what it sounded like. But either way, it was Nature Boy Buddy Landell. If you guys don't know who he is, throw him into your Google machine. Uh, he took on Ahmed Johnson. So poor Buddy. <laughs> but Douglas... They're just walking around back there. Hey, we need someone to wrestle. Yeah, you. Put that robe on. Go. Hey, Tubby, get the hell out there. Anyway, <laughs> Douglas slaps Johnson, and Landell stops Johnson from hitting Douglas. But then Johnson whoops up on Landell. Johnson wins in short order with a Tiger Driver. Was that the... That wasn't the Pearl River Plunge, was it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So he wins with the Pearl River Plunge. Uh, Douglas is rubbing his head in disgust and, like, looking down. Then Johnson comes up behind him and smacks his ass with his paddle. <laughs> this was stupid. Uh, notes, no. I, I said, short, made Landell look like a fat dork, put Johnson over big, though, one Uncle Dave. Uh, but that was all leading to this. Jerry Lawler calls Ahmed Johnson outside the ring for an interview. Lawler says that he's not impressed with Johnson's win and asks Double J, who says that he's also not impressed. Lawler claims that Jarrett lettered in football and had a 4.0 grade, uh, grade point average in school, while Johnson got his letter and had to have the coach read it to him. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, Johnson tells Jarrett that he's a fake urban cowboy and an achy, breaky heart wannabe. Jarrett blasts him in the back with his, in the head multiple times with his gold CD, uh, which, by the way, it wasn't just a CD. It was like in a, it was in a frame. So that puts it in context a little better. Uh, Lawler hits him with a chair, and then Jarrett beats him, beats him up all over ringside. Jarrett beats him with a paddle. Johnson no-sells it, grabs a chair, and Jarrett runs for the hills. And then they go fight into the back. Oh, so we see where that's going. Yay. Uh, we go to the back with Todd Pittengill and Razor Ramon. Pittengill brings up how Razor will be defending the Intercontinental title on Raw the next night against Yoko Zuna. I'm sure that was a barn burner. Uh, Pittengill gives Razor a letter from Goldust, which Razor reads, looks confused and disgusted by... Then he crinkles it up, throws it aside, and storms off in a huff. So, again, this is clearly building up to Goldust versus Roddy Piper at WrestleMania. Keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, next, Henry O. Godwin with Hillbilly Jim in his corner. Oh, God, took on Hunter Hearst Helmsley in an Arkansas hog pan match. Now available in the archives. Yep, I did not watch this again because I just, I couldn't. Uh, but we review the match in full in the archives on YouTube. Go check it out. Uh, we did a watch along, so check it out. Uh, Henry wins by, uh, the, the whole point of the match, for those of you, just real quick, was there was a giant pen full of mud and pigs up by the stage. They had to fight from the ring up to the pen, and the, the loser got dumped into the pen. So, yeah. I will say Triple H tried really hard <laughs> to make this a match. Not that Henry sucked, but, like, he wasn't the, the, the worker here. Uh, Triple H had his back busted open, so he's bleeding, fell into the mud with pigs all around him. So there's that. Notes, I said, they tried, it sucked, one and a half Uncle Dave's. Poor Hunter. Man. A commercial play. A commercial plays for the 1996 Royal Rumble, where they make it seem like fancy people watch this crap, and then they get into a big brawl, 
Vince then says that Diesel has a new attitude, and they show a video of Diesel destroying people, claiming that Big Daddy Cool is back. So keep this in mind. He's a heel. And I say that I say that with air quotes. He's a heel. Next match, Owen Hart versus Diesel. Owen gets a jobber entrance, because why wouldn't he? Owen tries really hard, but Diesel keeps whooping on him. Owen at one point goes for 10 corner punches, and Diesel shoves him off, and Owen flies back and lands on his effing head. Owen took some scary-ass bumps back in the day, dude. Uh, Owen tries to run, but Diesel grabs him, throws him back in the ring. Eventually, Owen makes a comeback and then beats on Diesel's legs, much like Brett does. Diesel fights back and absolutely no-sells the leg, uh, even though Owen has been working the leg. Oh, my God. (laughs) Had to throw it in. Diesel finally hits a jackknife and covers Owen with one foot, but Owen gets the kick out. Well, that's good. Uh, But then he goes for another jackknife, but but he shoves referee Tim White down first. That's not wise. And he says, (laughs) then he says, this is for you, Sean, and he hits the jackknife. White DQs Diesel for shoving him, who motions that he, and uh, Diesel motions that he wants his title back. Uh, By the way, up until, like, the ending here, and I even think even at the ending, Diesel was cheered, like, big time. Yep. But he's supposed to be a heel. But he's facing a heel, and he's getting cheered, and he calls out a baby face. I just, I'm so confused. (laughs) Like, I don't know what the hell. I don't know what is going on here. Notes, I said total burial of Owen, but it puts Diesel over big. And here's where I wrote, I said, is Diesel a baby face or a heel? One Uncle Dave. Very confusing. Speaking of stupid and confusing, this next effing segment, Ted DiBiase comes to the ring, and he... (laughs) You know what I'm going to, don't you? (sighs) Yeah... He's in the ring, cutting a this promo. Is real, by the way, he's, he's not making any of this up, guys. Yeah, I didn't. Come, I couldn't come up with this crap. <laughs> uh, but he watches Santa Claus and Savio Vega come from the back. They're handing out gifts. DiBiase then talks about hating Christmas and says that everyone has a price for the Million Dollar Man, including Savio Vega. DiBiase runs down Santa, saying that he's not real. Whoa, you watch your damn mouth, Ted. I will not sit here and let you disparage the good goddamn name of Santa Claus. <laughs> Vince then says, stop disparaging Santa. I swear to God, he said this on commentary. I laughed hard. Uh, Savio then says that he believes in the magic of Santa Claus. And Santa says, <laughs> Santa. <laughs> oh, my God. Santa then nails him in the back with his sack. Down goes Savio! Down goes Savio! And then he starts beating the crap out of him with Ted DiBiase. Santa leaves with Ted, but then he gets jumped on the stage. His hair and beard get ripped off to reveal Balls Mahoney! So suddenly that hitting him in the back with his sack is no longer a pun. (laughs) Yeah, right? Balls hit him with his sack! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we're so terrible. Um, but yeah. So Wait, I forgot. He passed away, right? He did. Maybe we shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> His name was Balls Mahoney. Of course we should laugh. I'm not crapping on him. That was his name. <clears throat> like The history of wrestling will be Funk, Briscoe, Flair, Austin, and Balls. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> By the way, who would put, no offense to, you know, not to crap on the dead here, but who would put him in the same category as them? Come on. Uh, I didn't say JBL did. <laughs> I know. For those of you that don't know, he was not Balls Mahoney yet. He'd never been to ECW. He was, however, Boo Radley down in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. So that's where they got him from. And he would go on in WWE. He put the asses in the seats, though, man. Oh, hell yeah, he did. He sold out, uh, you know, Florence, Kentucky. I just threw that one out there. I can't think of any freaking podunk town in Kentucky other than Florence. Uh, Florence, y'all. I'm not joking. It says that on their water tower. Florence, y'all. He he went on to be Santa Claus in WWE, which is the anti-clause. I'm not making this up. Who could? 
But they get in, he gets into a fight with Savio before they both get held back by all the geeks. And then the heels leave. God dang, this was bad. This was effing brutal. Bad. No good. Bad. We then see, speaking of bad, and it's another dead guy. I feel bad about this, but there's a video showing King Mabel talking about how he doesn't fear the Undertaker. Paul Bearer says that Mabel is in fact scared, and he will be finished off by the dead man in their casket match. So get ready for that. Uh, they put over how Kama stole the urn, melted it down into, the, into a chain, and now King Mabel has possession of it. Mabel also stole the casket and graffitied it. So that's what this whole feud is built on. Yep. Earlier in the year, we had a feud built on, Hey, you stole my leather jacket, you SOB. And now we have a feud built on, Hey, you stole my coffin, you SOB. 1995, Uh ladies and gents. Well, during King Mabel's entrance, Jeff Hardy is actually seen carrying the throne. That was an odd one. But we cut to the back to see Doc Hendricks pimping WrestleMania the arcade game. You remember that? I do. I played that. Fun. I played the hell out of that as a kid. Uh, but they are advertising it on Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and PlayStation. Uh, I've forgotten that PlayStation is that old. Uh, I was like, yep. damn. That was the first year. Yeah, I re- yeah, because I remember one of my dad's buddies had it, and it was like, oh, you must be one of them rich folk. <laughs> kind of like the first time we saw one of his friends had a DVD player. We're like, oh, oh, I see how it is. You're one of them there high-class peoples. Wow. <laughs> what? All right, it's King Mabel with Sir Mo versus The Undertaker with Paul Bearer in a casket match. Uh, every time Mabel hits a move or a slam on the Undertaker, Taker sits right up, no selling it. Finally, Mabel gets the advantage, and Mo dumps Undertaker into the casket. Yes, Mo dumped him in. Uh, Mabel can't get the lid shut, however, and Taker takes control. He hits a running big boot to Mabel, who goes flying into the casket as much as he could fly. Mo starts. Wow. <laughs> Mo gets in and starts beating on the Undertaker with the urn slash chain. So the Undertaker takes uh, him and uh, rolls him on top of Mabel, or takes him out and then rolls him on top of Mabel. Then Undertaker grabs the urn chain from Mo, like he climbs in the casket, grabs it, gets out, and then shuts the lid for the win. So that means that a big boot, one one big boot, put Mabel out for like five minutes. Think about that. <laughs> He's supposed to be a main eventer. Oh, uh, I'm leaving this alone. There's yeah. too many jokes, and I don't want to feel bad. Yep. But uh, while the Undertaker is celebrating, he motions that he wants the WWF title. It's really weird seeing an undead zombie wizard in a mask make the motion like, I want a championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, notes, I said, Undertaker tried his best with this load, but Mabel sucked. One and one-fourth Uncle Dave's. And I'm sorry, I realize he's not with us anymore, but god dang, he sucked. I can't ignore that. Jim Ross is interviewing Jim Cornette, Davy Boy Smith, and Diana Hart Smith. Cornette claims that Brett is jealous of Davy Boy and always has been because Davy came into Calgary and got his father's approval, stole his sister, and then became bigger than Brett. Mm, Opinion. <laughs> uh, Diana says that she's confident in her husband because he's beaten Brett twice already. Bulldog says that the WWF title is coming home with him where it belongs. And then we go to Todd Pettengill, who's interviewing Brett Hart. And Brett says that he's had to live with Bulldog, beating him in Wembley Stadium for years, and now he's going to avenge his loss. We'll see about that. So it is Bret Hart defending the WWF World Heavyweight title against British Bulldog with Jim Cornette and Diana Hart-Smith in his corner. This was the only good match on the entire card. It's just, ugh, and it was just one, one, it was a one-match card, I'll say that. Jim Cornette's racket cover is Santa Claus's face on one side, and then the other side said, ho, ho, ho. Santa's a heel. 
Oh, man. He went heel at his Boo Radley mother efforts. Should have came out of a Santa box. I mean, over. <laughs> Cornette drives the racket into Brett's face at one point, and Jerry Lawler loves it. They announced during this match, by the way, that The Undertaker will face the winner of this match at the Royal Rumble. Bulldog drops Brett outside and nails him so that Brett's face hits the steps very gingerly, might I add. But then Brett clearly gigs huge, huge. Huge. And after Davy Boy runs him back first in the steel post, Brett comes up in, from a red puddle, just bleeding buckets. Like, mother of God, he bled, like, just insane amounts. Bulldog hits a bunch of power moves on Brett. Brett rolls out of a bow and arrow and accidentally kicks Earl Hebner. But Hebner wasn't supposed to bump there, so he just shakes it off and he's fine. But if he was supposed to bump, he would have been down for, like, a year. Uh, Brett's bleeding all over the ring. Brett gets caught outside trying to jump on Bulldog, and Bulldog power slams him. Bulldog pulls the padding back to reveal the uh, the concrete, but Brett reverses a suplex to crotch Davy on the railing. By this point, the white on Bulldog's tights is bloody red. He's just covered in Brett's blood. Uh, Brett rolls Davy up with a La Magistral for the win. For those of you that don't know, it's like he hooks the arm and then rolls him up into a pin. You just look it up, damn it. Throw it in your Google machine. Uh, notes. I said, not as good as their SummerSlam 92 match, in my opinion, but I felt I also felt that the blood was very unnecessary. This match did not need ble- bread, Brett bleeding buckets. Try saying that ten times fast. But it was a good match, nonetheless. Three and one-fourth Uncle Dave's. Did you watch this one recently? Yeah. What, what, did, what did you think? Like, on par with their... It was decent. Yeah. No. Not as good as the SummerSlam? Hell no. Yeah. No, I just... I don't know. It was missing something. I don't know. I mean, it was good. I liked it. It just... Eh. But uh, then we go to the back with a In Your House exclusive. I think this was for um, only on uh, Coliseum Home Video. Todd Pettengill is in the back interviewing Paul Bearer and The Undertaker, congratulating them on The Undertaker facing Bret Hart at Royal Rumble 96. Diesel then charges in and says that that title shot is his next, not The Undertaker's. Bearers, Bearer literally says, Oh, Big Daddy, cool. You haven't been very cool lately. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that made me laugh really hard because I was like, What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Diesel then grabs Bearer by the by the tie, but Undertaker stop, uh, steps between them. They exchange some words and stare each other down to close the show. My God. So you see where that's going. We're going to get uh, Diesel Undertaker at... Well, not... That doesn't happen at Mania, does it? Or does it? Yeah. Mania 12? Mm-hmm. So, what was the match at 13? Was that Sid and Taker? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get my my manias in order here. Anyway, so that was In Your House 5. They all sucked. Just throwing that out there. But uh, when we come back, we're going to go down south, sort of. Uh, well, we are going down south a bit. Uh, for WCW, hut, hut. And uh, it Roll is... Roll tight. God. It is... You said south. Yeah, I did, unfortunately. <laughs> But uh, it is Starcade 1995. We'll be right back after telling you about some other great podcasts here on the Drama City Productions Podcast Network. Drama City Productions. Hey, folks, Big E here with some breaking news. My podcast, Karaoke Big E, was just named the number one karaoke podcast of all time. Don't believe me? Well, you should. That category definitely does not exist. My co-host Kevmo and I are in a league of our own when it comes to podcasts. So why don't you check out the world's best, well, probably only, karaoke podcast. Karaoke Biggie. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, or or wherever else you get your podcast. Or you can check us out at karaokebiggie.com. Come on by every Tuesday and give us a listen. And remember, you can't be a star if you don't shine.
Drama City Productions.com. Hey, it's Chris from the Stagcast. Join myself, Christian, and Missy as we bring you all the gaming news you need to know. With our penchant for sarcasm, we're throwing out all the social justice bullshit and are giving you 100% uncensored gaming news and opinion. So follow us down the rabbit hole that is our minds, and may God have mercy on your ears. We're back, and that means this is our last show of 1995, Greg. Oh, no. I can't. Well, I'm to know that. I brought some cake. <laughs> I can't say it's been fun it's been um something starcade 1995 the tagline is usa's toughest meet japan's best in this international wrestling showdown date december 27th 1995 from the nashville municipal auditorium in nashville tennessee this is starcade their biggest show of the year 8200 yep yeah that was a small venue they were sold out by the way i be- I-, I believe it was a small venue. Why? Like, it's, they proved that they can draw bigger. But, nope. Uh, whatever. They were scared. I guess. The uh, The commentary team is a three-man booth with Tony Schiavone, Bobby Heenan, and Dusty Rose, baby. Dusty claims that we're going to see some honey kicking tonight. That was something. This card doesn't feel like a Starcade to me, by the way, because... Hardly anybody no, watching. It feels like just like another show. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. The match quality was really good uh, for mo- for most of these matches. Not all of them, but most of them. But hardly anybody watching the show knows who the hell the Japanese talent are. Like, I knew Liger. That was, and Masahiro Chono. But, like, in 95, I wouldn't have known who the hell he was. I wouldn't have known who half these people are. Masa <laughs> Saido? Okay, maybe. Like, but god dang, who, who who are these people? They expected, oh, it was New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay, that's not going to sell a damn ticket. Whatever. But the whole thing was WCW uh, versus New Japan. Oh, the opening match was actually really good. It was Chris Benoit versus Jushin Thunder Liger with Sonny Ono. By the way, this is when I, I texted you at the end of this show. I said, I am so effing tired of seeing Sonny Ono. <laughs> yeah, he represents like the entire crew. He did. He was out there every damn match, except for like two. Him and Jimmy Hart, dude, they knew how to just freaking jackhammer themselves in there. Benoit, by the way, uh, gets booed during his entrance because he's one of the horsemen. But then the Japanese are all supposed to be the heels. Liger gets booed as well. <laughs> What's funny is Ono is waving a giant Japanese flag. And Liger had a little one, like one of those tiny ones you stick in your yard. <laughs> it was almost a joke. Dusty keeps referring to Sonny Ono as Sonny Bono. He did that all night. Uh, the referee, I had to point this out. I knew you'd get a kick out of this. The referee has a combo bowl cut mullet with a... Hell yes! <laughs> it was the worst mullet ever. I'm like, not only was he like, you know what, I want a mullet. But then he's like, you know what? Cut my bangs in the front to look like a bowl cut. Because that'll make it cooler. And then on top of that, he's got a gigantic porno stash. Huge. Big league porno stash. (laughs) What the hell? (laughs) I'm serious. I swear to God. Just Porno stash. I wish I could have had it with Stormy Daniels. What the hell? Giving her a mustache ride. (laughs) Moving on. Go back and watch this just for that guy. Just check him out uh dusty Rhodes is talking about a mile a minute by the way and i can't understand a word he's saying neither can tony by the way he's confused as all hell benoit hits a flying headbutt but the taskmaster runs to the ring to distract benoit jimmy hart tries to hold him back but liger hits the worst hurricane rana ever landing on his head and he still rolls benoit up for the win uh notes i said great match with a Terrible finish. I gave it three Uncle Daves. Well, when I think terrible finishes, there are two people that come to mind, and the and uh, Kevin Sullivan is one of them. So, congrats, Kev. Uh, mean Gene Okerlund is interviewing Eddie Guerrero backstage, and Eddie is clearly not the master of the mic that we would see in later years. He sucked. He's also uh, playing a big-time babyface role, which 
seemed weird, like knowing how the rest of his career would go. Uh, he puts over how he's been training hard for his match tonight so that he can represent WCW and the fans. Yay. Uh, but this next match, <laughs> God. Uh, Koji Kanemoto. Yeah, I'm waiting for the who. Uh, with Sonny Ono. He's taking on. Who? Yeah. He's taking on Alex Wright. Uh, Kanemoto finally drops Wright with a snake eyes and gets a jackknife cover for the win. Crowd boos pretty loudly. New Japan is up two to zip. Notes, I said, this was actually a fantastic match, believe it or not. I didn't know who the hell Koji Kanemoto was, but this was a really good match. Uh, these two worked fantastic with each other. I gave it three and one for Uncle Dave's, actually. But it was a mid-card match. <laughs> we go back to Mean Gene, who claims that on the hotline, Mark Madden will tell everyone who has been offered a large amount of money. Spoiler Everyone. Uh, Me Gene <laughs> interviews Sonny Ono, who says that when New Japan wins all the matches, they'll buy WCW and possibly the state of Iowa. <laughs> well, I don't know why Iowa. Me Gene says that WCW isn't for sale, but he doesn't know much about the state of Iowa. <laughs> and Sonny says that this is America. Everything is for sale. <sighs> wow. Yeah. This was a super racist night, by the way. Sonny Ono was a racist-ass character, like, so stereotypical. Speaking of him, god dang it, the next match, Masahiro Chono with Sonny Ono versus Lex Luger with Jimmy Hart, who is the American version of Sonny Ono. Or was Sonny Ono the Japanese version of Jimmy Hart? Either way. The, crowd's actually che- yes. the crowd is actually cheering for and chanting for Luger, who is supposed to be a heel. But it's because he represents WCW. Luger, I think he came out of a box. My God. Luger beats up, uh, is beat up on by Chono throughout most of the match, just getting his ass kicked seven ways from Sunday, playing the babyface role. Finally, Luger breaks the STF, which is Chono's finisher, and he later locks in the torture rack for the submission win. The crowd goes banana! Notes, I said, actually a pretty decent match. I didn't hate it. Two and a half Uncle Dave's. So there you go. Uh, Then we go back, another interview segment with Mean Gene and Sting. Sting says that Ono will buy WCW over his dead body. He also says that he and Luger are friends, and he and Macho Man are working on their relationship. Ooh, sounds like a love triangle. He also says that when he faces the U.S. champion later tonight, the title is not on the line. So that kind of gives some stuff away right there. It's just like a wrestling thing. Like, title not on the line, champ's going to lose. At the biggest show. Yeah. Whoa, why would we put the damn belt on the line, all right? Screw that. I just, mm, not a single, oh, I'm sorry, one, one title was on the line. And there wasn't a single tag team match on this entire card, by the way. And where the hell, like, the Harlem Heat, by the way, was on, like, every pay-per-view up until, I think, Halloween Havoc. That might have been uh, the last, and then they haven't been seen since. So they just kind of disappeared. Whatever. This next match is uh, Johnny B. Bad. Wow, he's in the middle of the card this time. Holy crap. <laughs> he is oh, yeah, he opened, like, every show, right? Yeah. And here's another case of a title not being on the line. He is the reigning, defending television champion. Uh, He is with Kimberly. Uh, He is against Masato, or not Masato, Masa Saito with, you guessed it, Sonny Ono in his effing corner. (sighs) Kimberly comes out flipping and dancing, acting like Johnny's cheerleader. She does that thing on the stage that Dana Brooke does, where she does, uh, she goes running and then does like the flip. Uh, she even shoots off his bad blaster full of confetti. I know that sounds like a sexual innuendo, but it's not. Ono grabs the microphone and points at Kimberly and says, that's what's wrong with this country. And says that, (sighs) says that women shouldn't be in the ring and have nothing to do with this men's sport. (sighs) And this just gets better, by the way, because he does all that. Then Kimberly. Because, you know, he's a man. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, Kimberly grabs the mic and calls him Hop Singh. And says that she's no geisha girl in a bathhouse. And if this sport was just for men, 
what is Ono doing there? Wow. So, sexist and racist. Wow. I know, right? We get sexism, racism, and it's just like all over the place in WCW. Woo! 90s. <laughs> <sighs> but uh, then we get to the match. These two are beating seven shades of crap out of each other. Like, they're just going to work. Uh, this is the first match that we've seen involving er, where Ono actually gets involved because the other matches he just kind of stood there and looked stupid. This one he actually chokes Johnny with the Japanese flag at one point. Later on he chokes him over the middle rope. Ono gets on the apron. Johnny grabs him. Saito nails uh, him from behind and dumps him over the top rope. And this is a disqualification because remember in WCW... You throw somebody over the top, that's a DQ, pal. So stupid. Yeah. So Johnny wins. Since I was a kid. Always made sense. <sighs> yeah, it was dumb. A stupid holdover from uh, Bill Watts. But Johnny wins. Kimberly gets in, and Saito stares at her. Uh, just, like, kind of grits his teeth. Looks like he's going to do something. Then Johnny attacks him from behind and celebrates Notes, uh, I said a very blah match. How could Saito lose? Did Johnny be bad? One and a half Uncle Dave's. Johnny be effing bad. Uh, on 83 Weeks, uh, the Eric Bischoff podcast, when uh, Conrad was talking about this, he said, uh, you had Johnny be bad beating Maso Saito. I can't believe Saito talked to you after this. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. Anyway, yeah, this was the worst match on the card, I'll say that. Uh, next, we go to Mean Gene Okerlund interviewing Jimmy Hart and Lex Luger backstage. Jimmy says that the Taskmaster did what he did earlier because he has a short fuse. Uh, over what? They never explain. Lex Luger says that he's going to the main event triangle match tonight to beat the best and become the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. He also puts over Macho Man's bum arm and says that he's beaten Macho Man multiple times in the past. And he's all and uh, he also says that for one time only, he's leaving Jimmy Hart in the back because Lex is friends with Sting. This storyline was stupid. He's a heel, but at the same time, he's BFFs with Sting, who is a face. The face. Yeah, this was just dumb. I don't know. This next match. Again, who the F is this guy? Shinjiro Otani with Sonny Ono. What do you mean, who is that? Yeah. Uh, Otani was apparently the New Japan Pro Wrestling Junior Heavyweight Champion. So there's that. He has Sonny Ono in his corner because, of course, he does. He's taking on Eddie Guerrero. The referee and Eddie are keeping their mullets high and tight. Uh, both these Hell yeah. Both these men do 95. some wow. Both these men do some dirty mat wrestling for quite a while. Guerrero hits a super hurricane rana and Otani kicks out. Guerrero hits a sit out crucifix bomb to which Otani barely kicks out. Otani locks in a heel hold that Guerrero barely gets to the ropes to break. Otani uh, got caught with something at one point because his nose is bleeding. I don't know what happened. Uh, the climax of the match saw Otani rolling Guerrero up in a sunset flip. Guerrero reverses. They go back and forth with reversals until Otani finally catches him with a quick three count. Notes, I said, one of the best matches of the night. Great match, and both worked their asses off. I gave it three and a half Uncle Dave's. This this was worth going back and watching, I'll say that. Uh, next, Mean Gene Okerlin is interviewing Macho Man. Asking him about the triangle match, Savage just cuts Gene off, putting over Sting and crapping on Luger. He says that he'll fight Luger to infinity and beyond. Toy Story must have came out. He said infinity and beyond like three times in this damn promo. Uh, he tells Tenzan that he's coming to get you. So apparently the Macho Man is also the boogeyman. Okerlund tells Savage that he had Hogan on the phone and Hogan wants to know what frame of mind Macho Man is in, and Macho Man says that he's in the zone. He's like, tell him I'm in the zone. You'll know what that means. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's like, so you just did a line of Coke. Cool. 
I'm just <laughs> joking. I'm not saying Macho Man was on cocaine. God. Don't send me hate tweets. Uh, next, we got Tenzan versus Macho Man Randy Savage. I actually really like Savage's attire here. It's like a neon, multicolored attire with gold M's on it. It was cool looking. Uh, this was a good back and forth fight, but Macho Man ends it with a flying elbow drop. Note, good match, two and three-fourths Uncle Dave's. Now, we go to the back with Mean Gene Okerlund yet again. There's a major meltdown. He says that there is a major meltdown happening, quote, elsewhere in the wrestling world, and he'll tell us all about it if we call the hotline. What the hell could he possibly be talking about? Uh, 95. I don't know. End of 95, beginning 96. I, there's nothing going on. So Mean Gene, not to speak ill of the dead, was Scheme com- Gene. <laughs> he was completely full of crap. So, I mean, there wasn't even anything majorly bad uh, other than their wrestling going on in ECW. So he's wrong. <laughs> Either way, he then interviews Ric Flair. Rick reminds us that his opponent, uh, or reminds everyone and his opponent, that to be the man, you must beat the man. I couldn't really take too many notes during this interview. It was a normal Flair interview. Next up, we've got Kensuke Sasaki with Sonny Ono versus Sting. Sting comes out with a huge American flag. Sasaki controls most of the match. He works the legs of Sting, and he locks in a sharpshooter on him at one point. Sting uh, finally slides off Sasaki's back, throws him into the corner, gets a face buster, and locks in the Scorpion Deathlock for the submission victory. The WCW guys from the earlier matches all come out to celebrate in the ring. My God, Alex Wright looks like he's got some sugar in the tank. <laughs> wow. He's got the flock of seagulls haircut, the dangly earrings. It, Yeah, uh, I'll leave it at that. Notes, I said, decent but short match. Two and a half, Uncle Dave's. Illy, illy. Mean Gene Oakland comes out to present the World Cup of Wrestling to the WCW team. Sting says that he's still got some work to do, but says that he only has one thing to say. USA. And the crowd... America. The crowd does not chant along, by the way. He was no Jim Duggan here. Take that for what you will. <laughs> uh, this next match, it just... I don't know why it happened, but it did. It was Lex Luger with Jimmy Hart. He's got to get more Jimmy. Uh, versus Ric Flair and Sting for a shot at the WCW World Heavyweight title. By the way, so Luger left Jimmy in the back for his earlier match, but not for this one that Sting is in. Even though he said the whole reason he was in the back was because he's friends with Sting. I'm really confused with this storyline. <laughs> I'll try to figure it out. She's going to hurt your head. Yeah. Maybe they just forgot and expected us all to forget, too. Think about this. Sting was just out there, got presented the the, uh, World Cup. He literally walked to the back, watched a video, like a hype video, waited for the two opponents to come out, and then he comes out again. (laughs) Why didn't he just stay out there? Ah, dumb. But, uh... I, I like I I thought I knew the rules of a triangle match. I thought it was just an elimination three way. No, only two men are allowed in the ring at one point, and you have to tag in the the other guy. So I was hella confused, and it's one fall to a finish. So I was just I'm like okay, uh, and who should start the match? Is it going to be Luger who fought I don't know three four matches ago, and Ric Flair who hasn't fought all night? No, it's Ric Flair and Sting, the guy who just wrestled dumb yeah but flair and sting start with luger standing in the corner luger gets to uh to finally gets to get in and the referee holds him back or no he goes to get in the referee holds him back because uh, he wasn't tagged and flair dumps sting over the top rope uh before going back to work on him uh finally sting falls into luger tagging him and flair begs off from luger he tries to run luger picks him up dumps him back in the ring Flair plays dirty to get the advantage back. Sting accidentally distracts a referee, allowing Flair to hit Luger's knees with a chair. And I've never su- seen such a ginger chair shot in my life. Uh, he later locks in the figure four on Luger, and Luger fights out. 
Flair tags in Sting, and the two friends do battle. The referee gets bumped. Luger gets Sting in the torture rack, and Flair chop blocks Luger, which was kind of scary because Sting almost landed on his damn head. Uh, Flair then dumps both men outside. They're getting counted out, but Sting goes to get in, and Luger grabs him and holds him out there with him. So uh, Flair gets the win via countout. Notes, I said, interesting match, halfway decent, two and one-fourth Uncle Dave's. Sting goes off on Luger on the outside, and Jimmy Hart seems like he's trying to sweet-talk Ric Flair so that he can be his manager for the final match. This was weird. Uh, I was just confused all the way around. Macho Man now comes out looking really pissed off, and he's not wearing his entrance gear. He's just got, like, a tie-dye do-rag and a T-shirt on. So, apparently, it was too much effort to put the cowboy hat and jacket back on, you know, because we know that takes a long time to get off. But Oh, yeah, it does. Trust me. Well, you would know. You you have a lot of experience with tasseled leather jackets and cowboy hats. <laughs> That's your normal everyday wear in San Francisco. <laughs> Uh, I'll leave Not that one. There. Yeah, I'll leave that one alone. Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage in the main event is defending the WCW title against Ric Flair with Jimmy Hart in his corner because, you know, Jimmy's competing with Sonny about how much screen time the manager can get. Uh, Paul Orndorff, wearing a neck brace, comes out and watches the match on the ramp for some reason. He's finally told by security to get to the back. I didn't know the significance of this. Flair beats Savage all over ringside, and even Jimmy Hart kicks him in the ribs. Savage dies off the top and gets punched. Hart distracts the referee and throws Flair his megaphone, but Savage hits Flair with it. Uh, or Well, no, he hits Flair, grabs a megaphone, and then blasts Flair in the head with it. And by God, you know how I said Brett was bleeding buckets earlier? Flair was, mm-hmm. like, Flair was like, hold my beer. Because <laughs> God dang, he just bled... Like, all freaking over. I think he probably needed a transfusion after this. But, yeah, so Savage hits a flying elbow drop. Hart is still distracting the damn ref. So, Flying Brian comes off uh, off the top rope, or, or he gets on the top rope. Then Chris Benoit runs into the ring. Savage grabs Brian and throws him into Benoit. The ref is now distracted with Flying Brian and Chris Benoit. And Arn Anderson gets in and blasts Macho Man in the face with, I guess, brass knuckles. They never did say. And then he puts Flair on top. Flair wins. The Horsemen go nuts for this. I said, decent match uh, that was incredibly overbooked. It literally took four or five guys to beat the Macho Man. Two and a half Uncle Dave's. And at the end of the match, Flying Brian rips his shirt off, and he grabs the world title and starts whipping Macho Man with it like a strap. And the, oh, yeah. the referee is trying well, to, that's... yeah, the referee is trying to keep everyone away from Savage. The con- Tony Schiavone calls Brian a loose cannon like five times within a span of two minutes. So, yeah, they're trying to jackhammer that one home. I haven't seen that so bad since Michael Cole was trying to get over the big guy. It's boss time. He doesn't even say that as much. I remember when, when, when Dolph Ziggler first started calling himself the show-off, Michael Cole said, oh, he's such a show-off, like 2,000 times in a match. <laughs> and then when when uh, Ryback first started calling himself the big guy, he called him that like 20, like just a million freaking times between his entrance and the end of the match. I'm like, we get it. He's a big guy. Who cares? Yeah. He's the big guy. Not just a big guy, but the big guy. Just like Roman Reigns is a big dog. By God. Balor Club is here. Beef. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. All right. So that was that. Uh, I gave, like I said, two and a half Uncle Dave's just because of all the overbooking. This was, I mean, it wasn't a terrible match, but. For all the Macho Man and Ric Flair matches I've seen this year, this was the worst. And I realize... I know. And I realize both guys competed earlier in the night, but this was not all that good. For a Macho Man and Ric Flair match, this match sucked. How do you really feel? Yeah, it was just... I mean, it, it was just okay, which 
is weird when it's those two. So that's that. Uh, anything else you want to say about 1995 before we wrap it up and say goodbye? Yeah, negative 12 Uncle Dave's. Negative five stars. <laughs> oh, man. This year of 1995 really set I think up. I'm over, I think I'm over 1995 now. Yeah. I mean, it set up a lot of stuff for the future, and it sucked. It just it sucked. Good thing 1996 would go on to be a lot better. I will say uh, Bruce Pritchard did say that they kept trying to convince Vince McMahon that Shawn Michaels was a baby face, and he's like, no, damn it, he's a heel. That little bastard is a heel. And then after WrestleMania, he said, damn it, guys, why didn't you tell me we got a baby face on our hands? <laughs> and he's like, you're effing with us. And he and he's like, why am I the only one thinking around here? Damn it, we got to turn him. So... That's why all that happened. Uh, everything you saw with Sid and the babyface turn, according to Bruce Pritchard, none of that was supposed to happen. They had to change it the night of WrestleMania going into Raw the next day. So 1995 was, I, I, it probably wasn't going to be any better the other way either. <laughs> yeah, it was destined to fail. Well, 1995 came in with a sigh and left with a wet fart. <laughs> we'll leave it in the garbage can oh. of history. <laughs> All right. Well, do you think it's time we, we let everybody know? Now that we've done 30 full episodes, we will tell you, you want me to tell everybody what our next subject will be, Greg? Yeah, because it's actually going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Next subject, we are, we are on the road to WrestleMania 35. And because of that, Greg and I will be covering WrestleMania one, not not multiple per show. We have, because of uh, critiques of Greg and others, and I see his point, we are no longer covering multiple shows per episode. We will cover one WrestleMania per episode, and we are doing by fives. We will start with number one, then we will cover five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and that will perfectly land us at WrestleMania 35. Our our WrestleMania 30 review will be the week before WrestleMania 35. That works out perfect, Greg. It's like we planned it. We should have been out WrestleMania 30. We should have, but we ended up getting a better show in New Orleans because of you know, like That's later true. on. So it is what it is. But uh, yeah, so we will do that. Uh, we will start with WrestleMania 1 next week. And uh, WrestleMania 1 will cover all the stuff around the event as well as much as possible to make it real fun and give you some more more content and you uh, demand it oh yeah and then Wrestlemania uh, when we cover a Wrestlemania we will also cover the previous Wrestlemanias we have not covered we'll we'll kind of gloss over them and tell you what happened in the past five years leading up to that mania should be a lot of fun I'm looking forward to it it'll actually be something good to watch and not just a bunch of crap so hooray but thank you for joining me today Greg yeah I'm sorry for torturing everyone. <laughs> It'll get better, trust me. Thank you all for sticking with us for 30 full episodes. The next 30 will be even better. Later. Huge. Peace out. This has been a Drama City production.